One of my favorite systems with black is the so-called hedgehog. Now let's show how a hedgehog can arise. Now this comes out of the Khan. Now if white plays c4, this is a typical hedgehog pawn structure where the c and d pawns have been exchanged and white plays the pawn to c4 and in this case the pawn is on e4 already with this Marozzi bind and black remains behind the first three ranks. Now why do I like this so much with black? Well it's because it's a wonderful counter-attacking opening. White is drawn forward, occupies the centre and then black hits out from the side of the board. Let's see how this works out in practice. I'd like to show you a game that was recently played by one of my pupils who came up with a really creative idea. So queen c7, okay, it's a, a standard move, perhaps looking down at the c-file, perhaps controlling squares along this diagonal. I will see how that takes shape a bit later. So this is all very standard indeed, both sides developing. a3, probably a good move. I know it looks uh, funny to play a small move at the side of the board, but actually black in some cases threatens bishop to b4 and the pin is annoying. So black has to bring out the queen side, uh, uh, the, the, the queen's bishop on an excellent diagonal and you can see how black starts to sort of snipe from the side of the board. But okay, this is a strong pawn formation and the pawn on e4 gets good support here. So black continues developing queen side pieces. All this is very regular from both sides and I'll, I'll just get to the kind of standard position here. b4 taking the c5 square away from knight and some other pieces and queen b8 and you could say this is almost the starting position of this particular line of the hedgehog. White you can see occupies the center with these pawns but black's pieces, although they looked rather cramped, are actually very flexibly placed indeed. So there's potential pressure down the c-file. Sometimes the knight comes to e5 to look at here, look at this, the c-pawn. That's one possibility. But normally black tries to break free with moves like b5, sometimes d5, sometimes if f4 overcomes, e5 can sometimes be played. Basically you have to judge which one is best looking at how white develops. Now white played knight a4 here. This kind of move has been seen before but normally white develops with moves like queen d2 first. But knight a4 has been seen. It's reasonable. There's a bit of pressure on b6. Sometimes this knight redeploys round to d3. Sometimes it's used to force through c5. And now black played bishop to d8. This is a very interesting maneuver indeed and rather typical for the hedgehog. Let's see what happens. Bishop to c7. So black is lining up the queen and bishop. Now it looks a little bit odd but in fact if black gets in d5 then this can be rather forceful. It can be very interesting along nice pressure on this diagonal and that's why white retreated the bishop to g1. This is a good reaction. But still it's uh, it's quite interesting to have the queen and bishop lined up like this as we're about to see. And here well rook c2. I'm not sure about rook c2. Um, I mean sometimes the rook can come here perhaps. Um, it just looks a little bit odd to split the rooks like this for the moment particularly with the knight slightly offside on a4. Um, here, if I were playing black, I think I would play rook e8. This is a very typical move for the hedgehog. Again, it looks, looks a bit funny. What is black actually doing? But actually, black is teeing up to play the pawn break d5. And in this case, you can quite easily see how the e-file could open and the rook will be very well posted looking down at the bishop on e2. So I like rook e8 but 
Well, the player of the black pieces here came up with a very interesting idea indeed, quite original actually, knight h5, and very creative. It's a very provocative move. Of course, it's possible to stop the knight coming into f4 with g3, but this is exactly what black wants, because this weakens this diagonal, and you can see that that bishop is uh, relishing the prospect of the position breaking open with d5 with the king in the corner. g3 not advisable at all. So how does white prevent the knight coming to f4? I mean, white would like to snaffle, off, snaffle this bishop. Um, so white plays queen d2. Okay, this looks pretty normal. And now d5 came, so you can see how finally black is breaking free. It's time to counterattack. Now, you know, maybe white could defend this one better, but uh, let's see what black's idea was. Bishop f4, so you can see black's piece is starting to flood out. White exchanges, queen is attacked and moves to a2. And now here, well, might be better to take on d5. Um, but I can, and then I rather like black's position, I have to say, because I, I don't like this knight stuck out on a4. But this move was so tempting, and I, I'm not surprised that um, black played this move. It contains a very nasty and slightly unexpected threat, actually. Here, white fell for it. He should probably play g3. Yeah, this it looks very provocative to play g3. Um, but I think if bishop takes g3, then now you can take on e6. And that somehow doesn't look too great for black. But instead, after g3, I think black should just sacrifice a piece. And in this position, the knight actually stands beautifully on f4. Now, I know black only has a pawn for the piece, but with this knight stuck out on a4, the queen also not very well placed on a2. And with the possibility of this diagonal perhaps opening up at some point, I think black has... Pretty good compensation for the piece, actually. You can see all black's pieces very actively placed, and white's pieces are rather split. But still, g3 was a better move. Yeah, a better move than the game continuation. Here, white failed to sense the danger and took on e6. And now we see black's idea. Knight g3 forces a checkmate. Seems as though white's king was completely safe. But after this, well, white gave a check on f7, but after this, there's, there's no more. And on the next turn, queen takes h2, is, will be mate. Really surprising attack, and you can see how black's pieces very often flood out and surprise white in this kind of hedgehog position. And I'm very proud of uh, my pupil for, for finding uh, that, that idea. I think he did extremely well. If you're interested in learning more about the hedgehog system, then do check out my PowerPlay DVD, PowerPlay 12, available to download from the Chessbase shop. Thanks very much for watching.